Jordy's visor is a remarkable piece of bioelectronic engineering. All lawyers were killed in the mid 21st century, and Lieutenant O'Brien thinks Farpoint Station sounds like a fairly dull place. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Ciroc Lofton and Denise Crosby. Hey. Thank you. Great to be here. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Huss. Today, we are starting our giant journey into the next generation with season one, episode one, Encounter at Farpoint, written by, this is amazing, Gene Roddenberry and DC yeah. Fontana, directed by Corey Allen. This was September 28th, 1987, or September 26th, 1987, depending on where you get your sources. And... Mm -hmm. This entire first season is sponsored by our good friend, Mr. Timothy Baum, Grandpa One. Special thanks to you, Tim. How you guys doing? We're so good. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm doing, doing great. great. We're, yeah. uh, we're, we're approaching um, Christmas. So, mm. you know, it's a joyful pause in the madness to you know enough time to just uh enjoy this beautiful southern california weather sorry guys in the midwest <laughs> yeah rub it in but i know you're under a uh, polar bomb or whatever they're calling it sorry mm. Hope you're safe and you know well first i i want i want to welcome you denise because uh i'm really looking forward to going over Star Trek, the next generation with you and mm -hmm. getting to learn all the characters and, and, and the work that you did. Um, it's been, it's going to be a pleasure. So oh, totally. the pleasure is Welcome. all mine. I'm so good. I'm so glad you guys, you know, brought me in, invited me in to um, walk this journey with you. I mean, because, you know, for me, it's, it's, again, I have not looked at any of this in 35 years. Which is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. Ciroc has never seen The Next Generation. Denise, you have not watched this in 35 years. Myself, I grew up on this. Uh, it's kind of like my first love. But I haven't seen, I don't think, any Next Generation in at least a decade or two. And some of these episodes, I haven't seen them since they were first in syndication in the mid or late 90s. And... I feel like they're going to be some of these episodes that I have no memory of whatsoever, and they'll be brand new to me. But Denise, oh. this is your first time revisiting them, and I can't wait to see this. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, what was the, what was the feeling like uh, in the beginning when you guys are first doing this pilot episode? What was the feeling amongst you guys? Um, were you already kind of expecting a long road? in this Star Trek journey, like, oh, this is going to be at least five, six, seven years, or was this like, okay, what's right in front of me? Uh, where is there nervousness? There wasn't, it, it was, it was all such a mystery, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we certainly didn't anticipate uh, six or seven years or whatever it, it went for sure. Um, it was, it was, it was kind of a mixed bag of, of, um, is this even working? I mean, is this like, <laughs> what in the hell are we doing here? You know, right. what is this thing? Um, of course, we had all seen the original Star Trek. Um, I didn't watch it in the 60s. I was a little too young when it first came on. But when it went, you know, into syndication, it just mm -hmm. ruled the airwaves. Five o'clock became a ritual every night, you know, to, to watch uh, the original Star Trek. So we all knew what Star Trek was. Some certainly had uh, more more um, uh, love for the show than others, but it was really um, it was interesting, you know, because we're at, on the Paramount lot, um, but we're kind of this these sort of redheaded stepchildren, you know, in on mm -hmm. the lot. We're not really um, we don't have the cachet of 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 cheers you know who was shooting right. along as well we're kind of right. like this weird anomaly that mm -hmm. nobody quite understood except that you know you had gene roddenberry anchoring who had right. a legacy and had you know some 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 cred but as far as what this 
made for syndication television series from a show that had been on 25 years ago and didn't and was constantly being canceled and mm -hmm. was you know was was in grew its strength from the fans what this looked like in terms of the industry or it was this was this legit almost it was it was very surreal it wasn't like any other tv series i i had i had guested on at that point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i had never been a regular on it on a series by then at that point so this was my first you know series regular gig and um everybody was you know coming from different places very very diverse backgrounds the cast and yeah. um you know it was just we just kind of said we're we're in we're, we're going along for the ride we don't know where this is going but um let's just uh let's just we got each other's backs you know we sort of that's all we only had each other cast wise mm -hmm. The first year was very rough with writers and producers and getting it, getting its grip, getting its footing. Yeah. So was there you know, someone that was there someone that kind of had your back from the get go that like really stood out? Was it like Gene Roddenberry? Was it an AD? Was it one of the your fellow actors? Was there somebody that just kind of like stood out on that first day or that first episode? You was know, it Livingston, I, I, the uh, lionfish in Picard's? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, um, I think we all knew that we had to, we had to communicate with each other because we couldn't, we just weren't sure what was going on behind the scenes. They, the, the, um, the first season, we did do something that I noticed went away when I came back in subsequent seasons. And that was we would do a table read uh, with each new script during <laughs> lunch, which I think is an amazing thing. I've done I've done it on many other series, but uh, we would go we would um, lunch would be brought in to a conference room. We would all sit there and we would go page by page. Jean was always there and welcomed. Um, questions input uh what does this mean you know there's just so many questions like well what is this thing and why did it do that and what do we need to do for here and he was and it was really helpful and it kind of grounded us in this um this world a little bit that we were creating out of fantasy so that was really helpful um I don't know why they abandoned that. You know, when I came back in the third season mm -hmm. in Yesterday's Enterprise, which, you know, kind of going off off book here, but I they they were no longer doing that. And it was like, hmm, I don't know. It's where always, where were the know, lunches? Where were these? Like just at the cafeteria or some room in some room in the uh, that wasn't being used in the writer's building mm -hmm. on the Paramount lot, you know, big conference table sandwiches were brought in or something and you know we just sat there with our with our script you know page one anyone page two anyone yeah That's i have so something cool. yeah yeah it wasn't even like as a matter of fact you know table reads generally uh, are done where you you start you read you read the you read the script we didn't read the script out we were just like anybody on page two have anything well yeah i actually yeah gene what is this thing if, oh, if if she okay. beams down and wants to eat a plant, why 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 is it? <laughs> why can't she eat the red one? You know, I mean, like things like that. It, it mm -hmm. wasn't that we were doing the, the the script. Interesting. You know, one thing I noticed uh, right away, I felt like the characters were already, or the actors had a good understanding yeah. of the characters. So it felt like even in the beginning. Uh, Brent Spider's portrayal of Data is pretty accurate to how he's going to maintain it over the course of, of what I understand him to be his Data or all the characters, for example. Uh, uh, Captain Picard is, is is pretty much taking the, the helm right Troy, away. And you can Troy, see, definitely. Right. Worf is still the same <laughs> guy. Right. Every one of them later. are kind of pretty much right in the beginning. You see them 
as they end up becoming over the mm-hmm. time, it's, they don't really stray too far off of the personality traits that you see in the in this first episode. And I I just wonder where everyone gets such a strong grasp of the characters mm-hmm. so early on. You know, that's such such an interesting thing that you say because in watching it last night, you're I felt like you're just dropped in to this already ongoing mm-hmm. shit. You know, there's no sense of how each one of these characters are there. With, no establishing with, anything, background, no, anything. No. Yeah. And you know, get right into is, it. And you know it's not they've not been long on this mission because they don't have Riker yet. Right. You know, they don't have their first officer yet. So it's like this is fresh. And this is, um, I'm assuming, you know, well, you assume that these people are at the top of their, their class, you know, to be assigned this mission under this captain, mm-hmm. each one of those people. And I almost wished there was a, a, a better telling of that, more of a sense of why would... Tasha Yar of all the people in the academy, in the you know, be the one chosen. Like, and it doesn't have to be an elaboration, but you want to get a sense of where these people are are in line with where they're at at this time. And I didn't get a sense of of that or timing, like how long they've been together, and it, it so. In, in in sort of relation to what you were saying, I think we were dropped in as these as you see it. You yeah. know, we're like dropped in to this show and we're like, I got I'm doing all the work back home. I'm trying to figure out who is this character because I'm not you're not seeing it on screen. Mm-hmm. So I've got to show up with, you know, some some cohesive person well we got a sense of it right away yeah 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 i thought that i and i agree with you Sirac. like i put in my notes like how immediately we see how every character fits into the story and what makes them different every character is introduced with a special superpower right where we understand why they are so valuable and what they bring to the table and what they're good at. Tasha Yar kicks some padded up Marine and knocks them out super quick and easy. You know, Troy feels emotions. Data is, you know, mechanical. We get it immediately. And I was actually really impressed. Like, again, like what Sorak is saying, I was really impressed, not just with the writing of how well everybody was introduced so quickly and for us to understand and be able to grasp it, but the actors portraying it immediately we we get who these people are and i gotta be honest when i was middle midway through this episode i was getting so pumped i mean like like data's padded fake bosom pumped i was yeah <laughs> i know i was just that so like, excited is that in his chest <laughs> uh i i love this set i wanted you to talk a little bit about the walking in because this is the 80s and and the set that you're on pretty much you know nobody has this kind of like set yeah. at the time. And it's so elaborate, so beautiful. It's, it's just, uh, you know, I noticed the detail on the chairs and the re- they kind of reclined a little bit too much for my estimation, if you're going to be in a starship, but they were these yeah, laid oh. back chairs. I think they changed them in the second or third season. If I remember yeah, correctly. That's yeah. Funny. I, you know, I, I had, the, I had yeah. the when, um, when, Data was at his station and there was, you know, like an ensign was, uh, you know, at filling in yeah. at yeah. his station and just how casual he was like this, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like, like he was in a low rider yeah. driving yeah. a, a, yeah. a 64 yeah. Impala. I even, I even said, look, I even wrote it. I even wrote a, a note. <laughs> I, I was, I was scribbling stuff. I went casual. Yeah, yeah. wake up, like, Benson. Way too casual, dude, to, to be flying this thing because for we're, real, we're like, I was thinking like the same Q, thing. Q has set up the you know chain link fence around the universe, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, going, he's like, oh, yeah, all right, Captain. 
Not, yeah. not only that, but I was thinking how uncomplimentary it is to the body, to the form and shape of your body. You mm -hmm. know, if you sit like that, your stomach pops up. You don't oh. really, you can't suck your, your fake gut padded in. bosom. Yeah. That's how your I notice Dana's yeah. immediately. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Get this <laughs> fake bosom out of the poor guy. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, so it's not even complimentary to your posture and your body. You know, you you would expect somebody to be sitting up and at attention as opposed yeah. to. You know, like you just had a few beers. <laughs> One would think. Now you'll see. You'll see with me. You know, because I'm. St I stand the entire. Yeah. You know, seven years Smart. or whatever. Smart. Um, but, At the ready. Know, they. It, what happens is you'll you'll see me working that you know horseshoe that console and hitting these buttons. And as the series progresses, I'll be yeah. hitting one button <laughs> because I think I think um, Michael Okuda the great designer of all this, this, this stuff mm -hmm. yeah. in his, the most gentlest um, whisper aside came to me one day and said, I think, you know, by then you'll only need to push one button. <laughs> <laughs> only one button. Will need but to make be it count. <laughs> in that century, <laughs> you know, you know, cause I'm, I'm like working the console, yeah. you know, <laughs> Like, like, like a DJ, like, 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 <laughs> like you know, DJ. electric light orchestra. You know, I'm playing yeah. a synthesizer up there on the bridge. Love it. Yeah, uh, I, I did notice that. I was like, these chairs are way too comfortable. There's no way Starfleet's approving those uh, laid back chairs. But uh, laid but right back. away, another thing that jumped out like, from the beginning, the music just like I have to say grabs your attention and places you also in the space that opening yes. credit music and it was from dennis mccarthy extended did you notice how it was extended to give us all these extra uh yeah. credits and i wonder if that was just the first episode i think it was it's yeah. it's very i noticed the music Beautiful. as well um and it it, it is fully orchestrated this yeah year. i mean it is it it is it is big it's epic it's like cinematic yes more under this it's absolutely uh, and i don't i well we'll see how it goes i mean i don't remember if it if if this is what we're we're in for or if well, this it's, is, it wasn't just the opening credit so it came back around oh, throughout oh, the yeah throughout the episode. throughout the episode it is heavily heavily uh orchestrated you know like a yeah. like a steven spielberg you know movie kind of thing it's it's big mm -hmm. and it and it really was great i dennis yeah. mccarthy is uh he starts Legend. he hits home runs he's amazing yeah um, Ooh, a little teaser uh yeah, sorry, a little teaser. Teaser <laughs> towards the end of our uh, show we're gonna have a, a new little <laughs> segment that sorok just teased uh, a little bit yeah but yeah the, the music actually to me it felt cinematic. It felt movie quality, but it also, yeah. in a lot of ways, and, and the the tone and the theme and the the scoring remind and the, the storytelling reminded me more of the original series of Star Trek than it reminded me of later iterations of Star Trek. Even more so than season seven of Deep, uh, of Next Generation. Season one, this first episode felt more like the original series than it did of season seven of Next Generation, and it's because Gene Roddenberry wrote this. He probably had his hand in every single thing, I would assume, Denise, where it, it very clearly feels like a Gene Roddenberry production and DC Fontana. Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Ryan. Um, he, he, lo he, he loved what worked in the original series, yeah. and he wanted more of that for us. So a lot of the people working, certainly um, Bill Tice, who did our mm -hmm. uh, costumes, he was on the original. Gene, Gene felt very um, safe and comfortable with people he liked to work with before. So he, he wanted to sort of just replicate that as much as he could and felt comfortable with that. So mm -hmm. um, there, there were a number of people like that. And uh, um, just real quick, yeah. speaking of that, there were some other names I recognized in the credits. There was uh, Michael Okuda, of course. I saw Mr. Tice, Rick Sternbach. Uh, the the UPM was David Livingston, who we know just kind of trailblazed throughout 15 years of Star Trek. Did you notice Ciroc and, and uh, Michael Westmore doing makeup? 
Oh my the, God. The assistant director of that episode, Sirach, was Les Landau. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know that. I Loved didn't it. see that. Les. Yeah. <laughs> the ever present Les Landau. Um, I want to give you some credit, uh, Denise, because I am not. I wasn't familiar with your performance as uh, Lieutenant Yar. So this is my first introduction really uh, to you as an actor. And, you know, I was blown away by uh, several of the scenes that you did. And I want to credit you for them. Um, the first one was when you um, kind of spoke out of turn yep. or out of line. And uh, Picard, he's like, well, you know, why don't you explain that to me or something to that effect? You know, like, tell me why you think that's the way. And clear, clearly it was not. And but he, he was very gentle with you in that moment. But you were so good in your response because you did a moment, you paused, you collected yourself and you did what I wish people would do, like in the world more oh. often. And that is to say, I spoke before I thought, sir. Mm, and yeah. just and just acknowledge that, you know, I, I, I think that was that was out of place. And I thought the way you did that, the way you delivered that moment was excellent. I, I, I was just like, wow, that's that's really a fantastic. It was like um, the big performance of the episode, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you also had later on another big performance was the speech that you gave when uh, Q was doing the whole judgment court thing. And you you contested and called it, you know, this so-called court when you had down the fight on its scene. knees. Yeah. And I, I thought that was another great delivery by you, Denise. So I just want to credit you for the, your performance in this episode mm -hmm. it was just excellent. Oh, you're so dear. Thank you so much. You know, those are the moments um, that you look for to give you, to clue you in on who this character is, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was always looking for moments of um, either vulnerability or, or, or inappropriateness or just human, you know, folly. Because what you I was weary of w was that these these characters are too perfect. They're too idealized, you know. And when you start to dig through Ta uh, Tasha's backstory, that she um, was an orphan. Uh, she was orphaned. She survived rape gangs on a on a hostile Earth colony. Oh. She survived. You know, this is that informs this who this woman is. So th those moments of impulsiveness with her right. is is what is is how she is as a woman is really her character. So she's constantly um, in check with that with herself because now she's in a very um, uh, you know high position of authority and she can't. She can't go. She can't fly off the cuff. So that, mm -hmm. that, as an actor, is the stuff that is is you know wonderful conflict to play, mm -hmm. and and now yeah. you've got something to hang your your hat on. You know. Wow, that's and really cool. I felt cool. that. I did feel that in that scene. Mm -hmm. I felt like there was like a, oh, I have all of this emotion, and I kind of let it go unchecked. I I didn't put my regulators on, and right. I and I'm. I spoke before I thought, basically, you know, I, I, I reacted too quickly. And I'm glad that you had that moment because obviously he has a lot of faith and trust in his crew and the people that he represents. You know, I think that was expressed during the uh, Riker scene when he kind of goes through the whole. So you, you know, you were trying to save your captain, you know, number one, you know, kind of grills him. Were, it kind of grills him. And yeah. And I enjoyed that scene, though, because it means that the people that he's surrounding himself with as captain are people that he can he knows to, that he can trust for certain things and go to for certain things. And I felt like the thing that he can go from, from you was that kind of honesty, but also the humility where it's like, I'm not trying to override you, but I I am a strong, passionate person. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know. 
one of the best scenes that um, I ever had on the show, unfortunately, was never filmed. What? Wait, uh, you know what? Let's we're going to take a break <laughs> yeah, that's real a good quick. One. This is perfect. Uh, <laughs> Got to hear this. And by the okay. way, uh, Denise, if you are looking for inappropriateness in characters, you're going to love the next few episodes. Um, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I know. Yeah. We're so good. Uh, it's, there's going to there's I, you know, it's wonderful. So many I don't remember. You know, oh, I, mean, I, re- I remember a trip down like, memory lane. Like even in even in <laughs> Encounter at Farpoint, I remember the court scene with Q, yeah. but I don't remember when we were in those tunnels. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah. My, I watched with my son. I didn't son. remember that either like, when I just watched it again. They're, they're like looking at me going, Mom, do you remember filming that? Not even. <laughs> not a little a bit. <laughs> not <laughs> even. Not even nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> all right well let's uh take a very quick break and there's gonna be a ton of stuff you're probably gonna remember like some and and not others i mean i already forgot stuff and i didn't even act in this thing so i can only imagine uh all right here we go we'll be right back on seventh rule hey everybody welcome back to the seventh rule with Sirac lofton and denise hello, hello. crosby uh very quickly uh for anybody that is just joining us for the first time that didn't enjoy our first 200 episodes with Deep Space Nine or our other 100 episodes with all the new Star Trek series. Uh, Right after the break, I throw down some of the trivioids that didn't make the uh, cutting room floor, the things that we said at the very top of the show. And here they come, fast and furious. Beyond Deneb 4 lies the great unexplored mass of the galaxy. Data doesn't know Snoop. Q talks Shakespearean. Dangerous, savage, child race. Uh, are the humans q's court is very very accurate all lawyers were killed in the mid 21st century data does a great impression of picard and q o'brien thinks farpoint station sounds like a fairly dull place dr crusher is shy around men she doesn't know dr crusher likes fabrics with gold on them uh riker refused to let captain de soto beam down to altair three geordie's visor is a remarkable piece of bioelectronic engineering troy senses pain loneliness and despair data needs to practice his whistling wesley thinks captain picard is a pain and children are not allowed on the bridge all right so (laughs) denise you teased a very cool and interesting story this was a scene that you shot that did not no a scene that uh was my audition Oh, but it no. never made it to the actual. Never made it oh. into the episode, and it was absolutely one of the best scenes and the most revealing to me um, who this character of Tashiar was. Mm-hmm. And it, w- M- Marina and I talk about it all the time. It, it was a scene between Tasha and Troy. Um, Tasha is uh, in Marina's uh, quarters, and. She's basically letting her know how insecure she's feeling, how she feels oh, she's wow. not worthy to be uh, in this position, that she's not qualified, she's not good enough. Um, Captain Picard is so amazing, and everybody on this ship is amazing, and I don't think I can cut it. And Troy, as the counselor, says um tasha that's that's ridiculous you know that's that that's not true you've earned every moment uh to you know and 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 earned your right to be here and you are the best in 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 the academy and of course and she says but i don't i just i don't know if i can if i can handle things and and i think picard is 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 better and 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 i don't think he likes me and troy just goes Tasha, you gotta, you gotta calm down. Okay, what are you doing for fun? And Tasha goes, fun? What, what's that? And she said, what are you doing to like? Do you, are you going to the hollow deck? Do you, do you get together with friends? I mean, you've got to just relax. You're mm-hmm. working. You can't just work all the time. Basically, go out, have a drink, go to the bar, have some fun, loosen up. You're good. You got this. Yeah. And Tasha's like, really? 
that's wow. what I should do. And it was this beautiful sort of reveal of this, this, again, like I had mentioned this insecurity on the other side, it, what, what is so fascinating about Tasha is she's so fierce and so able and gives this appearance of such strength and uh, resolve. And yet inside of her, there still exists this very frightened child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was just a wonderful way of doing it. Plus the women rarely had scenes together in the show. And it was just, you, you, saw, you saw these two women confiding in each other, supporting each other, sharing, you know, their truths. Yeah. And, and it, I don't know why. And th that was Marina's audition scene. And that was my audition scene. Really? So when we, I, got I, the part, I think that we gives a lot of backstory. Yeah. To, Absolutely. to who your character is, but it, uh, I can see why they didn't want it in this episode because of, the, the focal point of where they're trying to, you know, go with this mm -hmm. episode. It yeah, seemed like it would have been a, a, a too soft further, of a moment. Yeah. I think it could have been further introduced right. in, yeah. into yeah. the show. It and it's a great, to... it's a great character moment for both, you know, for, mm -hmm. for Marina, you know, for Troy to show what she's good at on top of sensing these and sensing that uh, to right. show the depth of Tasha yeah, Yar as a character. There's so of much course, there. She is the counselor, you know, so she right, counsels, right. not just. But I, you know, speaking of that, I did think it was unusual. And correct me if I'm wrong, if this continues to go on uh, for the show, but I thought it was unusual for the counselor to be sitting next to the captain in the main uh, on the bridge. Oh, you're uh, gonna get used to it. <laughs> That's not gonna change. <laughs> I know, but I'm like. Well, because but I, I, I she's don't counseling count the captain. She's in yeah, that role. Like, she, on right, the bridge, right she's more of an there? advisor. I think. I think okay. then she's more of an advisor. Plus, you know, and I'm just going to push back on this probably because I've seen the whole show. But like, <laughs> it's an extremely useful person to have. A, a captain wants somebody that can read the opponent emotions and minds or yeah. foes emotion. Is this person that I'm talking to hiding something from me? Are they right. genuine? what's going on uh you know what you know what do you think you know and she advises him and on the other side his first officer advises him on different things and then Worf says something dumb and he goes no to him or whatever you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but he just has these advisors around him that's right that's right yeah I think that that will become um more apparent as yeah. you know the shows go on um yeah I just thought it was it was a, a little bit of a deviation because was that the case in the original Star Trek? Was Captain Kirk surrounded by two other counselors or two people? Kind I don't of. think so. I thought it was. I thought they were like farther and away. Yes, but they, oh. right on his side. Each no, side. No, you're right. You're right. No, no, they were farther away. What yeah. I'm saying is, the captain sits in the captain's chair and has kind of like a space around him that he is. It he is in a singular section of Some the elbow of the location. room, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, two seats on either side. I, I understand them being in the room, but maybe not like right in the in the section of the captain's nice. chair. That's my own take on it. But, right, because uh, in the original series and on the Defiant, the captain's yes. chair was by itself, and yes. then right. everybody else was at their station. And slightly raised, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, like right. you know, like throne like, you know? like throne like. Yeah. yeah. So it's it seemed weird to me to see everybody sitting so close together playing footsies while they're uh, flying through the ship. <laughs> I'm like, God, wait till next space, episode. Man. Yeah, there's there's a lot of space. footsies going on. I also noticed that um, aside from Patrick Stewart, who has a beautiful voice mm -hmm. and is a remarkable just actor he's he starts off right away just kind of blowing me away with his performance in this so uh but i did notice that uh his name could be pick hard because he's hard on everybody uh, <laughs> i'm so glad you said said this because i, I my takeaway you know having not seen this in 35 years i yeah. was like god he's mean he's mean it's tough i yeah. mean he hates kids he hates kids. Well, let's like not be children. so hasty about that. That's, that's kind of cool. Well, <laughs> no, I, I, I found 
I found, and again, he just, you know, he just brings it, you know, he just brings this voice and this, this articulation, Bravado. This, yeah. this, yeah, this, this strength, uh, um, uh, um, but he's, he's, there's no irony. There's no sense of humor mm-hmm. in his, no, no subtlety. There's it's no, all, you know, it's Kirk, all blunt force, like uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I mean, it, it's it's interesting i i you know my when he when he he makes you uncomfortable that's when what he, I'm he saying. felt the most militant in a lot of yeah, ways he feels militant like, and he makes people un- like he's almost trying to make you uncomfortable not trying yeah, to make it, you comfortable I, the opposite. I i got that feeling i'm i'm right with you i was i had forgotten you know that that whole speech that he talks to uh, Riker about, you know, help me with kids. I don't like kids. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not comfortable around them. I've got kids on this ship. Uh, basically. Congeniality. You, He's saying congeniality is my problem. <laughs> I'm not yeah. congenial. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not warm. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna. And, you know, the thing, so then you, 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 you know, you look at Kirk and you know he's always got sort of like charm a wrinkle in his eye yeah. and, and you know he's like in on it Smooth talker like, like it's, <laughs> we, we got this you know or bones come on you know yeah. you're, you're ridiculous you know i mean relax. bones i mean relax we, we we'll saw bones in this episode oh. how cool oh, well, was that, that? yeah, yeah that's that was interesting great. that was well, great except except and i god love i love to forest i you know was so charmed by him when I interviewed him for Trekkies. Mm. Um, but it was interesting because he's he's doing he's like he's like a, got a cowboy accent. Yeah, Almost. what was that? Like when, doing a caricature of himself. Sound like I thought it was like, is that John Wayne? Is he doing John an impression John? of himself? Well, boy, yeah, I don't know if you're gonna ah. go down the road there, but that's a mighty fine ship. You know, I don't go, wait, has he been like in Wyoming for the last <laughs> years? Like on He's a dude climbing range. Rocks. That's He's what climbing Bones, rocks. when Bones retired yeah. from, from the Enterprise, he yeah. got a gig in, you know, Laramie. <laughs> And he's been roping he's, cattle for the last 40 he's in years. T- he's been in Tulsa, Tulsa. Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah. having his bones, making his bones. Uh, yeah, I, I thought I thought that was a little bit. I was like, who is this Southern? <laughs> who's this guy from? The, yeah. this, this he called Dana cowboy. Boy like 15 times, too. He's a cowboy. He's a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was crazy. But I did think that Captain Picard was exceptionally abrasive for some, for for the beginning and and uh unusually intolerant to children i I didn't see the the need for it i you know i can understand like you know this is you know this is serious business here we're we're in the middle of a crisis and you know kids can't be out here throwing a frisbee i get that (laughs) but the guy but the guy took on the 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 mission he knew families were on board yeah I, I, I mean, don't this understand. wasn't like a surprise. Like, oh my God, yeah. there's kids here. Jesus, get them! Well, off. it's the flagship yeah. of the Federation of Starfleet. I mean, so even he's even take if, it, but... even with Q, for example, who clearly has uh, this kind of these kinds of powers of omnipotence that he has no idea about, right? He, get off of my ship! Get off of my bridge! I'm like, dude, the guy can literally. Whisk you Snap away. his finger. Yeah. And you're talking to him in this same tone of, you know, uh, abrasiveness to me without even softening it up for the guy that could literally snap his finger and and and, and put you in uh, purgatory. So I didn't understand the. I, thought, I didn't understand I that. I got the same takeaway. I, I hmm. went, wow, this is. Uh, he's got like, a. What's, a, what's a your problem, bro? Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody get this guy some girls, and that might be the problem because you know, Kirk Kirk had a lot of girls. He was always That's you right. know with you know flirtatious and having women. I think this guy's like has this pent up like sexual type type of uh, release, and then he sees he Crusher, and then there's uh, yeah yeah something I know. more there. He needs to go to the bar, have a drink, and go to the hollow deck. You know, yes, get, get it on, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, O'Brien, young Colomini was just so going to bring that up. Fun to see, wasn't it? So good. It was amazing. And he does. 
he and does what did you think of Worf's haircut by the way for i just gotta ask uh, you what you thought no. of Worf's haircut no hey, what <laughs> Worf? Worf is haircut. the one thing they got wrong in this yeah, whole thing. All wrong. Poor, okay, poor Worf. Uh, his the the color of his makeup doesn't match. I know at I, all. I, Same I with know, Data. You I can know. see the. Color. It's. Oh I know. I mean, with well, Data is an android. Uh, this yeah. guy. I mean, he's he's they're using this different kind of brown on his tone mm. that doesn't match the brown of his face and i'm thinking guys it's it's a it's a color thing it doesn't take a, a, a rocket scientist to figure this out color. that's that's gray that's a gray brown it's like greenish <laughs> it's a greenish gray brown that's are not you, mr the brown wolf are you feeling color? all right you look a little pale <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> my favorite part with war is when Q appears on the you know outside on the screen yeah. and yeah. trying to shoot him through yeah. the screen yeah. and, and through, you know blow a hole through yeah. the view yeah. of the ship. Even Picard, yeah. goes, well, what are you going to shoot the shoot yeah. the ship? Blast a hole in the main view. Blast yeah. a hole in the in the ship. Yeah. I'm going. What? How did this guy get this job? Well, that's where that's where Picard's demeanor actually works for me. In those moments where he looks at him like, what are you, an idiot? That, <laughs> and he does that, what are you, an idiot kind of look a few times. And, and it looks yeah. great. It, it works well. Uh, when he gets frustrated with uh, a Wesley Crusher at the helm, boy, uh, that made me laugh. When he saw that he was dripping wet when he comes out of the hollow yeah. suite, and he, he looks at him with such disdain, like, get yes. out of here. And, I love it. Drinking wanna, on my bridge, you know. Yeah, you wanna, and that I, I like. I, I, I like yeah, it that. Yeah, Those that like. works. Those I didn't Absolutely. want to take you too much away from O'Brien, though, because I know I, I okay. jumped in on that. But yeah, how cool was it to see Colomini playing yes. O'Brien as Baby O'Brien? And they called him. His credit was because I, I want to check: was he Chief O'Brien? Was he Lieutenant O'Brien? He was Battle Bridge Con. So, can you imagine? He got eleven years of star trek out of oh we need a we need a, an extra character to say a couple lines here kind of like what uh casey biggs did or other characters did mm -hmm. but he looked so fresh-faced um you know everyone fell in love with Colum the minute we really? met him I mean, that yeah we just he just was just this this warm irish presence and you mm -hmm. know just just we just liked him we just, everybody wanted to be around him and it was like oh great Colum's back and it just <laughs> and the producers felt the same way and you know slowly built built him in further and further so he does these he's the king of these looks where he kind of looks like uh, uh, Pat, mm -hmm. uh Picard said we surrender uh in that moment and O'Brien looks over like we surrender. Like, <laughs> who is this guy? <laughs> we don't <laughs> surrender. We don't surrender. I don't surrender. Someone I didn't transfer me to DS9. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But I, I want to say though, um, for the sake of Gene Roddenberry and Star Trek and what I believe <clears throat> some of the elements are that comprise what Star Trek is. Um, these, this episode had some, had those elements that I believe really make Star Trek what it is. The, one of them is the idea of tackling or discussing morality. So right off top, Q comes in and, and starts questioning humans, morality and their decision-making and says, Hey, you guys did this. You did this. When you wore costumes like these, you did this, you created these atrocities, you killed all of these people. And so uh, Picard found himself in the position of defending humankind, right? Uh, but I think they could have even went farther in that. They kind of went a little bit, but they didn't go as far mm -hmm. as I wanted, uh, as far as making the morality debate. Um, the other thing that Star Trek does is technology. They gave us the technology in this, uh, you know, with the consoles, the set the designs, holodeck. The, the holodeck, the, you know, all of the little g gadgets and communicators. Um, the other thing that Star Trek does is Shakespeare. Uh, they love Shakespeare. And here, right away, first episode, uh, they quoted Shakespeare, killed all the lawyers, guilty until proven innocent, that whole scene. Um, so I felt like, wow, this is, that's what Star Trek is. It's a little bit of Shakespeare. It's a morality question. 
and its technology, right? Wow. Well Beautiful. said. Well Beautiful. put. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, I, I think that's sort of the linchpin of this episode is, is the questioning of our, um, our, 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 our crimes against humanity you know, are facing our, our obligations, our moral compass, you know, have we changed? Nothing's changed. Um, we're doomed to repeat. We cannot get past who we are, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that is just so profound. I mean, you could be writing that every day, you know, all week long. Yeah. This is what we're grappling with. Every single moment you pick up a newspaper, you turn on the news. The, these are the big questions and they don't change. You know, it's, and so I had forgotten that really this episode really just opens the door. I mean, Q arrives on the bridge like right away mm -hmm. and yeah. let's go. Now, the other story, it's like they tagged on the other, you know, the, the, the energy, the, the two creatures. The, the jellyfish. The, you know, the jellyfish, mm -hmm. the pink one, the blue one. I mean, it was a little <laughs> like, come on, really? You know, I, I don't even know why. What, that, why that was necessary in the well, story. It was, and, it, and I'm trying to, rem I don't know why that was. If they, it, it felt really tagged on, didn't it? Yeah. Like, they needed like some they kind of closure. They just needed something to be like, okay, so we've accomplished this mission. Uh, the problem was that the most interesting part of this episode was everything else that we got, like the learning about the characters, how the characters mix with each other, you know, the technology, the morality plays that mm -hmm. that other, you know, the jellyfish thing was kind of like the excuse to put them all together. Um, I think I, I, I felt like you did. I felt like uh, Denise that it was almost two stories trying to merge into one because yes. the Q stuff was very specific about. And, and the other thing that I didn't get was uh, how it, it didn't merge or seamlessly kind of integrate Q's uh, plan for them and the test and trial that he was going to put them through with the jellyfish thing it wasn't yeah. clear enough that that was being orchestrated by a Q and that this was all a test for them so i didn't feel that they made that connection well enough for mm -hmm. me i felt like it was like two separate stories they're at far point this and that i just didn't, couldn't really Absolutely. get a Absolutely. hold of the story same you can imagine so you know here we're we're somewhat versed in this you know universe i mean ryan you you know really probably know a lot more than even I dream you know, about I it every do. night yeah but yeah <laughs> i mean you know so i'm watching with my husband and my son who have never seen star trek yeah. and i asked my husband today i said did you get did you understand last night i mean they were so delighted to see you know see me and yeah. and they had never really seen me on on star trek you know i wasn't gonna sit down and, okay we're gonna watch mommy now you know so <laughs> it's, all, it's all happened organically which is which is perfect and yeah. um and my husband was like i have not a clue yeah what i i have no idea <laughs> What? I sense great confusion in you. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that's indicates to me, you know, I mean, look, you know, but I can watch some show that I don't know anything about and and I can mm -hmm. follow, you know, I, if, if the story is good, I can follow it. You know, if it's yeah. if it's you don't need you don't need it explained to me mm -hmm. the next yeah. day. So well, that's a kind of an indicator. We'll tell you what, we've got about a minute left. Um, yeah. So we're introducing this brand new thing. Sorok and I were wrestling about this and we're like, we got to do it. It's the home run of the day. Yeah. Uh, so very quickly before we go, Denise, who do you think hit the home run today? Oh, my 
goodness. Um, because everybody at home, Denise's son plays baseball. Sorok, as you know, is well versed in in baseball from his days on Deep Space Nine. So it's a very very symbolic thing here we're working with. Well, I I believe. I mean, I don't know if it would be someone. I I I really find what we were talking about the 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 moral yeah. compass of humanity the story idea the the breaking open that storyline right at the top right in the pilot of the next generation you know really i think sets in motion um star trek what about you sirac yeah well, originally I gave it to Dennis McCarthy because I think mm -hmm. um, I think the music defines a lot of what the show is about too, and it it just encapsulates almost everything that I can visualize when I think of the show. But I would have to, in reflection, say that the home run goes to Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, uh, the fact that he's able to bring his vision back alive um, after all of those years and give it a second shot. You know, it didn't really take off the first time the way he wanted it to, the way he envisioned it would. And there was a layoff and there was a time when there wasn't any Star Trek. And for him to have the courage of his, you know, the courage to continue to push his, you know, vision and, and, and stay true to his convictions. I think that that in itself is like, the first one is a miracle. The second one is like, how is that even possible? Totally. Um, so I give him a lot of credit for uh, putting this vision together. And I think that he did a great job of casting everybody on this show, because even though I didn't get the story, I did get the characters. And I think he did get that right. You know, that's almost exactly what I was going to say. Uh, home run goes to Gene Roddenberry specifically, but more in general, just the creators of the show. That although, you know, there, there are going to be a lot of kinks, there are going to be a lot of, you know, things out there, imperfections in the show and in the script originally. But what they got right were the characters and the casting and the idea, the concept. It's very clear that they made this excellent cast of characters that we all immediately understand and know and love and find interesting or find weird or strange or funny. Uh, secondarily, a little, you know, maybe call it a triple for Colomini, for turning a, a couple lines and a couple looks into quite the career. Uh, but let's give... Uh, and, and let me add one more just really quickly, Patrick Stewart, for just, you know, it's not easy to be the captain and to have all of that mm -hmm. pressure resting on you and a focal point. And he, uh, he, regardless of how you, you know, decisions he makes here and there, he is captivating. When you watch him, you are watching him and you can't kind of turn your eyes away from him. So he is uh, fantastic as, as a Captain Picard. Incredible actor. Incredible. Oh, yeah. I was, you know, as I was watching it um, last night, just thinking they got so lucky to get yeah. him because I'm not sure if it would have flown like it did. Pun intended. Without him. Yeah. Without him. Yeah. All right, so let's give, totally agree, love Captain Picard, love Patrick Stewart. Uh, let's give a very special thanks to the man so cool, he was named after our segment, Homer Frizzell, Dr. Anne-Marie Siegel, Eve England out in <laughs> Wales, Yvette Blackman, Tom Carmen, a.k.a. Skillet, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, Bill Victor Arukin, Arukin. Titus Muller, Darlena Marie, Dr. Muhammad Noor, Tierney C. Diekman on a post, uh... Rex Dr. A. Moore. Wood, Anil O. Palat, Joe Balserati, Mike Gu, DQ, Neil Akasaka, Justine Norton Kurtzen, Dr. Stephanie Baker, Carrie Schwent, Faith Howell, Edward Foltz, my live from Tokyo, Matt Boardman, Chris McGee, Justin Weir, Jake Barrett, Jane Jorgensen, and of course, Dr. Susan V. Gruner. Thank you all very much. Everybody stick around. We've got the free for all next. We'll be right back on the seventh rule. Uh oh. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the seventh rule with Sirach Lofton and Denise Crosby. Can you believe it? 
Oh, hello. Uh, we are joined by Goldu Scott Jensen, Melissa Longo, Carrie Schwent, Faith Howell, Chris McGee, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, live, uh, sorry, my live in Tokyo, who's not actually in Tokyo at the moment, uh, <laughs> Tierney C. Diekman with a dog behind her, I think. Eve England out in Wales, Matt Boardman, and of course, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri. Very quickly, something we like to do for everybody that's just joined us for the first time because you didn't want to see any Next Gen or any Deep Space Nine or any Prodigy or Lower Decks or any of the other stuff, just TNG. We do something called non-appearance mentions. I counted two non-appearance mentions in this episode, which is people that were mentioned that we see in the series but they were not in this episode per se like the actor was not there uh melissa's thinking real hard on this one (laughs) did anybody uh get the non-appearance mentions i got two uh Uh, wesley crusher's dad yes jack crusher yes and one Captain DeSoto was the other one. Oh, good one. Amazing. Wow. Okay. Oh, USS Hood. Yep. Okay. Rock knows that one well. All right. I know the hood very well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I try to stay out of the hood. You know, you know if that. you're not from the hood, you should get from around here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> one of the things that I noticed um, last night watching, which I totally blanked on was that Riker and Troy have history. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I do not mm. want a girlfriend that can talk directly into my head. That's mind control. That's that is good. mind control. That's that's ex-girlfriend that hops right back. Good. I don't brain. think that's good. That's, that's not that's good, not good. For anybody. No, 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 no. That's not good. No, nobody wants um, that. Yeah, I would have I would have ditched I would have ditched that guy pretty quickly, you know? Like get out of my yeah. head. Get out of my yeah, head. You gotta wear your tinfoil here. hat around them. Well, wait, yeah, so I, where where does that remind me? How does that where did they know each other? Oh, they met. Riker on was stationed on Beta Z, mm-hmm. and that's where they met. Oh, they... Good knowledge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was oh, their first guys. encounter at Far Point. Hey, yeah. hey. Sing. <laughs> oh my god! It's all downhill from here, everybody. Okay. Uh, all right. Sorry. So, Got it. Sorry. let's uh let's get up on this. Uh, Melissa Longo, get us started on the right track, please. Uh- <laughs> Have you seen this episode before, and what'd you think? Well, I just watched it uh, yes, yesterday, I think. I don't know what day it is. But um, I was pleasantly surprised. I hadn't watched it before, surprisingly. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. Um, they, yeah, no, because it, I mean, it has a different wow. tone from Deep Space Nine. But that's not a bad thing. It, it kind of feels like it's it's progressing the evolution of storytelling um, that TOS had already started. So I still got that essence. Um, I, I liked that the first episode challenged huma- humanity and mm-hmm. um, puts into question its motives. Uh, I also like that there was a message of conservation and compassion for beings beyond the two-legged kind, like the jellyfish, the space jellyfish, and, uh, which I loved. And um, there was a, a clear attempt to plant seeds of character development for everyone on the crew. And uh, we don't have many answers yet, but, you know, with We'll wait and see and then um but overall i, I liked it i i think it 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 um is socially progressive in that it was made in 1987 mm-hmm. and uh there's a lot of you know which star trek was really really wonderful about and in this episode i think continued that uh journey of social progression and mm-hmm. us looking inward and holding a mirror up to ourselves. So, yeah. <laughs> Seeking out new life. That was one of their first things they did in the very first episode. Jellyfish. Uh, <laughs> what about you? Oh, that was 
they do. Yeah, <laughs> seek out new. He said in the beginning, seek out new life and new civilization. Bold to go, but that's the one he did today. Uh, what do you think, Gold Do Scott Jensen? Man, it was a fun trip back. I remember literally having watched this the night it premiered. Um, this is the wow. only trek I feel like I could say that I actually remember seeing the first episode as it premiered. Uh, it was an event in my house. So my dad, you know, I, I was raised on on Kirk, Spock, and Bones, and um, it was an event leading up to. It. Well, actually, he bought me the the TV guide uh, a couple of weeks before that had like the previews in it, and I got to look at all these new characters. I thought it was so super cool. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. I had one question though: Why do we always call stuff Far Point when the people that built it, it's like Close Point to them? It's not like it's not far <laughs> from them. <laughs> <laughs> If we're keeping the, like the baseball love, references I, I, from earlier, that's a foul tip right yeah. there. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Wait, that's not... it, was a lot, it was a lot of fun. I was I was going into it remembering how dated it really or 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 telling myself how dated it really was. And no, nah, man, it was great. I loved it. I loved the the music was was beautiful. Uh the fashion was a little bit uh scary at some points, but I loved <laughs> freaking Wesley, man. Everybody gave Wes such a hard time. I thought he was a great kid in here. I'm gonna try to keep carrying on, you know, protecting good old West. <laughs> but um, a- another question that I had was, how many other times are we gonna see the battle bridge? Because that was awesome. So cool. The separation not of the nearly saucer. Enough. So yeah, cool. Not nearly enough. And it was like right off the bat. And I didn't remember it happening so quickly because I was like, I know it's an awesome marketing technique because those toys separating into two separate you know, ships is money in the bank but <laughs> i want to see that battle bridge more but i i seem to remember the theatrical shot during the dominion war of all those galaxy classes just getting blasted through the through the saucer section i'm like wait a second we have a built-in standby for that guy send get i don't here. know about the rest of you guys but i was uh strangely erotic for me watching that thing uh disconnect and reconnect <laughs> <This again. laughs> and wow. which was erotic the <laughs> disconnect or the journal. reconnect i don't know i'm just yeah. saying the jellyfish tentacles too at the end yeah. oh yeah the jellyfish one yeah the, just yeah, hold on man it gets even crazier yeah for serotic sure. yeah, hold on <laughs> we um i, well, I, I want to say I this that- I love that one of the jellyfish was pink and the other one was yeah. blue. <laughs> yeah. To simplify yeah. it for us. Oh, okay. We're still we're still there in 1987. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I got I have to I have to bring it up because this is probably the first and only time I'm gonna be able to say this in the seventh rule. My man Bones. Yeah, there. that's the actual oh, guy. Oh, damn, you got the oh, yeah. Yeah. That's that's nice. boy. And he said my favorite line. Um, I don't know if this is going to match the one that Sirach was, was talking about a little bit earlier, but he said, what's so damn troublesome about having not died? Yep. Such yes. a great line. Yeah. 100% Such a great line. purified. Mm-hmm. Of course, Kelly. Purified but he did it with a twang. He did it with a twang. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he had a little bit more of that, George. Yeah, I'm actually... He's yeah. being a cowboy now. He's a cowboy. I live, I live about about an hour away from where he was. Well, he was born and raised. So um, hearing oh, okay. that accent was it kind of went over my head a little bit when I heard it. But yeah, it was absolutely great seeing him on there. But what was the line that you were talking about, Sirach, that you said was that stood out to you? Oh, mine is different. I, I mine wasn't the four, uh wasn't his line. I, I did like when he said, "Treat her like a lady, and she'll always bring you home." I oh, I love that, was, that line. Oh. Love that line. That was yeah. that was the line that I like that he gave. Uh, but no, my line is uh, Picard's line when when he's so upset about Wesley in I the uh, captain's chair touching. Children. Yeah, when he's like, uh, uh, "But don't touch anything, and get off the bridge, both of you." And he kicks both of them off the bridge. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude. Dude. That's right. I thought that was a good Yeah. So seriously. Beverly was quite upset about that, too. And well, she yeah, should be. Your, your life might be in her hands one day. You might want to treat <laughs> yeah, her a little nice. Cool, Remember man. when you yeah. kicked my son off the bridge? Oh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so into seeing Jake Sisko viewing the Wesley early years. This is so fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Somebody uh, young as me, finally. Yeah. All right. Speaking of which, here we go. I can't make that connection. But uh, Eve England out in Wales, how are you? What do you think of this episode? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, well, I I knew 
obviously, you know, I was going to have to watch it and, and come from it from a different perspective and prep for it. So, you know, I, I knew obviously track. Because you've was, never watched Next I've Generation never seen before, it, no. shockingly. What? What? So I've, I think wow. I must have seen the odd bit on TV when, you know, when it was on in the UK, but I don't sort of remember any of it. But obviously track TV, everything's changed so much since 1987. So I, I, I thought, right, okay, I read my, I read all the intros in the companion. So huge thanks to Larry Nemechek for that. I, I really wanted to just get in the headspace about, you know, what was the context? Why, you know, what were people expecting? What was the kind of context for, for the show coming out? So, and I think that really helped actually, because I was pleasantly surprised actually with the first episode. I suspect that it seemed to be, I'm, I'm assuming it's been remastered because the quality seemed really good because that was the first thing that struck me. I was like, wow, the quality of this, you know, all the colours and the, you know, the, the graphics all seemed really, really clear. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, so stylistically, I thought it was really well done. I, and I could see that, you know, the way that they put all the characters and the way they used the colour palettes and you know, the, the visuals, like I said, you know, that separation was really cool. And I could just imagine, you know, if you were watching that for the first time, it'd be wow you know this is this is amazing I've never seen anything like this so I, I doubt there was anything like that on tv at the time so I thought that was really really cool um but also I was really surprised by the tension and the conflict between the different characters and how mm -hmm. spiky some of the relationships were because I know everyone's been saying oh you know compared to Deep Space Nine they didn't want any conflict and tension between the characters etc but I was like I mean Picard the way he's you know, he just ignored Raiko when he came on board and the way he spoke to Wesley and actually quite a few other people. And then some of the other relationships, I thought, oh, this is actually, I was quite intrigued by that. I thought, hmm, looking forward to sort of seeing how some of these relationships play out. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And just finally, and this is a question I think for Denise. So the companion um, talks about how Tasha Yar was inspired by Vasquez from Aliens, cool. which I just love that film. But yes. I was just wondering whether that was something that, you know, they... Um, they spoke to you about at the time and whether you know or how you might may have what, been influenced then by that movie and your portrayal of Tasha Yar because I thought she's a really really interesting character and I could definitely see see the Vasquez kind of parallels there um you know the original uh uh design so to speak for for Tasha Yar was um physically quite different than me it was more a, in a line with the character of Vasquez um uh, uh Jeanette I'm trying to remember uh, Ramirez yeah yeah Jeanette Ramirez no Ramirez Hernandez yeah wasn't it yeah yeah, yeah. so so she Larry. um you know she she she's dark and 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 dark haired and smaller than me and stocky and built and tough as nails and um that was that was how Tasha was kind of um, envisioned. So once I got in there, um, well, I don't know if you know this, I originally was reading for the character of Troy and mm -hmm. Marina was reading for the character of Tasha. So mm -hmm. somewhere in the mix, they, they, Jean liked us both and just thought, what if you do that one and you do that one, you know, and just flip it. So um, it, it just, I didn't, I mean, the only thing with, in terms of Vasquez and I love the movie, um, was just her ability, you know, to do uh, physically what any other guy around her was yeah. capable of. So that was a novel idea. That was, you, you were starting to see a little bit of that crack through um, um, in, in places, you know, that, that women were 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 fighting to get places in the military. They were they were breaking glass ceilings in different capacities. They were becoming CEOs. They were becoming in charge of studios. You were just starting to see this sort of happen. So, you know, that was that was the um, kind of inherent uh, sort of impetus for this for this kind of a woman in a traditionally male role. Oh, cool. thank you no, it's really because really, it, it was really interesting and I, I it, it was I mean this is probably something for another time but it was quite interesting reading some of the background and some of the descriptions of the characters and you could definitely sort of see the sort of 1980s sexism and um, stereotypes in how they were originally anticipating it all working um, so I'm going to be really interested to see how that kind of progresses as you know, as, the sh as the show progresses and see how that sort of 
um, it, how, how we see more of, of what we, I suppose, we see later on than what we see in this first episode. It definitely reflects the 80s, which were, you know, a slippery slope. There's like, you know, uh, two steps forward, three steps back. You know, we're, we're kind of on that trajectory at, at this point, and the show will really reflect that. <laughs> now, it, the ideas are there. It's Eventually. not all illustrated <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's not always executed yeah okay. all right uh carrie schwent is also here hanging out with q's galaxy net or whatever that thing was how are you carrie <laughs> did you love this episode what's up i do i do and yeah i love q and yeah had a huge huge crush on him myself as as a, as a y- younger and my mom had a crush on him back when he was on days of our lives when i was like little <laughs> and yeah his 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 character his character's wife was a lot like waxana like a version of waxana but on a soap opera at least that's what i remember from being from being a little kid but i've got i decided to change for the for this new era with some of the instead of some of the the haikus the haikus i thought were some of them were some of the episodes were just going to write themselves but then i thought you know what i'm going to take another page from the delta flyers boys and switch to limerick instead they can have a little bit more fun more fun with a limerick so here's what i came up with for encounter bar point this is from what for yeah for this episode okay but yeah, for encounter the, it for okay. That's what yeah. Okay. But anyway, Q is an omnipotent being who doesn't like what he's seeing. There's a station we see that's not what it seems, and Troy sensing all kinds of feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I have a couple of couple little nitpicks and shout out to Hallmark, but I got a new little nitpick. Helper, we've got little <laughs> little cute little, cute, little, cute, little, cute, little outfit. And he's cute. very very soft, but he has a couple of questions, and the first one being using printout only. So there are printers and reams of printer paper hiding in various cubicles around around the ship. <laughs> I miss that. I always took that yeah. to mean printout on the monitors, meaning no verbal communication. Mm. Okay. Not Dr. We, we, can, we can get behind that. And the two and when you when they arrived arrived at Farpoint Station, couldn't they have picked up the Soxer section on the way? Because the bottom section has the warp, so they would have had to pass the saucer section. They couldn't just pick it up on the way. I've always kind of wondered that. And when Wesley comes out of the the holodeck and he's all dripping wet once he crossed the threshold shouldn't he have been instantly dry instead of dripping all over the car i wonder about that if that's part of the safety protocol like the safety protocols also prevent you from soilage protocol or something like that. i might have an answer for that too but also well carrie um if you still have more we're gonna have to save that for the the bonus segment here because we've got to move on but it sounds like we've got more goodness coming our way uh Mm -hmm. Faith Howell is also here. She's at the helm of the Enterprise. What do you think of this episode, and how have you been? Um, first, I wanted to, to say welcome to Denise. I'm so excited yes. you're here. Um, I remember watching, well, maybe not watching this the first time it aired, because I was too, but I remember being <laughs> excited. I remember my house being excited for this to come out. Um we had always watched um, the original series together, my dad and I, on Saturday mornings. And so um, we've always been a Trekkie family. And so I, I remember that energy as this was you know, coming up and, and we were getting ready for it. And so um, I've probably seen these episodes a million times, but not recently. So it was cool. very interesting to get to go back and rewatch um, just like it was brand new. Um, it was really fun to get to re- reacquaint myself with the characters, and I was really surprised to see um, Chief O'Brien, well, I guess not Chief, but O'Brien there from day one. 
Mm-hmm. That was awesome. I'm, um, I don't have a whole lot to add about this particular episode, but I'm, I'm super excited to be watching through again with you guys. Right. Sweet. Yeah. Definitely lots of O'Brien love. Uh, we we're talking about that. Super exciting. Uh, Chris McGee, what is up? Wearing a Darmok shirt. How do you feel about this episode? What'd you think? Oh, it brought back lots of great memories. Uh, I didn't, I was not watching the show as it aired. Unfortunately, I watched it much later on VHS tape. And as I recall, yeah. by the way, uh, the, the jellyfish, they didn't work, really look pink and blue in the VHS. It was only until the HD remaster that you could finally see the color difference. And then I thought that was oh, kind of nice. Um, a couple of notes that I took, well, I've taken a bunch of them and I'll save the, those for later. But uh, one of the things I thought was interesting was using the phrase good morning as a farewell. Normally, at least here in America, we don't really, really say that often as a farewell. Of course, when you actually think about it, you're wishing someone to have a good morning. That's why mm-hmm. I, 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 I hate it when some people say, oh, it's not a good morning. Don't say that. It's not a good morning. And that's not the point of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, some things I noticed that have changed s- since this episode uh, that ha- that change, you know, later in the series, such as turning while you're going at warp speed that i think was uh addressed in like a voyager episode if i'm not mistaken they say like you know first thing you learn about uh warp speed is like uh faster than light no left or right something like that i could be mis- misremembering but and of course as we all know the ferengis are not really cannibals uh that, we that was a crazy line yeah. yeah yeah Hope they find you as tasty as their past associates. Yes. Yeah. And I don't believe <laughs> the computer voice was voiced by Major Barrett Roddenberry in this. I was think it, it was not? a different person. I'm it was I Bonnie Gordon. The credits. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely a lot more conversational and chill of a, yeah. Of a delivery. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last thing I wanted to bring up, something I, I might do um, with each episode, I don't know, we'll see if, if it sticks, is the phrases of the episode. Um, and because this is a double length one, I have two ep- phrases. These are phrases that kind of just stuck out to me for, for whatever reason, not necessarily popular phrases, just something that stuck out. The first one is costumes like that. Mm-hmm. And the other is great joy and gratitude. Yeah, said twice. <laughs> for emphasis <laughs> cool well well done very nice uh speaking of conversational and chill tierney c deekman is here looking very festive uh how are you and what do you think of this episode i'm well thank you and this was just a joy genuinely to go back to mm-hmm. um i've held off on a tng rewatch because of doing ds9 uh, and it was like looking at it through new eyes again. Um, it was just, it, it was great. And Denise, I'm so glad you're joining us because uh, you've always been a favorite character and it's always been that moment when you weren't on the show anymore that it's the sadness of, but we don't have Tasha. And, uh, you know, the, the TNG rang through my house from the time I was born onwards. There was always a Star Trek going um so this was this was great um trying to look at it through the eyes of someone who say only had the original series and what they might see looking in on this and these characters my dogs are not sorry um and uh going on to this new bridge with this crew and this 80s pastel spa like earth tone atmosphere of of the new enterprise uh and wondering what the hell is going on what is data before they get the exposition and q pops up in his outfits and it it must have just been nuts uh after all of kirk and spock and bones uh and then of course seeing deforest kelly at the end must have been such a treat um excuse me sorry my animals (laughs) (laughs) i love them they're oh they're wonderful they're just nuts <laughs> especially with company but uh you know maybe not then as a first time viewer but looking back at it the rough edges of this kind of makes it a lot more fun um you know 
everyone's getting their bearing. So one of the critiques you see in this a lot are there are rough performances, you know, awkward performances, but they almost seem a little like art housey looking back at them as, as everyone's getting used to things. Data's a little more lore um, in some of his delivery. He's a little creepy in the holodeck, you know, looking down at Riker there like, dude, what are you going to do? And so new viewers must have been very confused at what's happening here. Um, you know, but sometimes you you see the way they react with one another and you half expect transatlantic accents to come in with these performances. Um, but uh, there's silly little additions that come in, probably just to pad the runtime, but they give us an immersion to this world, Geordi with Crusher, um, in in sick bay and that that little officer that checks out right Riker just up and down eyes him so you know a little dated in in the time but just all these small things that bring everybody you know into the show and of course Riker's or not Riker's Picard's Ferengi's uh Ferengi line to to Grappler Zorn but um just the last thing given 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 everything that Star Trek was at that point with the original series, I really adore the risks that came in with this as a pilot for a brand new series, not, not the movies and the adventures or the original, but whatever was intentional or not as a risk that came out. Um, they gave their pilot's antagonist a philosophical, well-thought motive for what he was doing, uh, however frustrating. Um, their new enterprise captain was, was bald and British or French and he's aloof and he outright surrenders at one point. Like, I don't know what the hell viewers must have thought about this, but it worked. And then the episode ended logically, even if, I guess, if you want to call it that, even if it is, um, space jellyfish love. But it worked. There's no, you know, no mysticism, no giant space battle. It's just, it's campy and it's kitschy and a little dated, but it feels like a true homage to original Trek as well as, you know, old legendary sci-fi. And it's still something super new. And it became why we're all here why I have toys all over my house as an adult and spend too much money on things. And none of you knew what you were getting into at that point. And we love you for it. Like it, it, it was amazing going back to this. I'm so friggin' excited. Uh, like just, I loved it. I loved mm-hmm. this again. Me too. Me too. Me too. the same. Uh, you know who else loved this? My live in Tokyo, live in Switzerland, Austria. I think. <laughs> yes, I did. I loved it. It was. I watched it when it first came out. Uh, it was like going on. I knew I was going to re- the rewatch. Was like going on a on a road trip uh, to a place I'd been and I mean, so I'm so happy you're writing on this road trip. So thank you for being here with us. Oh, um, it starts out with with, with Q getting the car and told him out of guff and and. and and Picard just stares him straight and it's quite a directive. And I was like, yeah, that's that's setting the tone because he's been that person the entire rest of the time that we've seen him. I love that. The title theme playing when they're doing something a little bit risky, like the, the saucer separation, it was just gets your blood going, doesn't it? It's just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was tripping on uh, on Marina's teary-eyed, scared look. And that, that was some acting because over the years we've gotten in our conventions as a smart ass London accented person likes to walk in. <laughs> Sassy. I love it. Nasty. <laughs> that was that was yeah, that was great to see that and knowing that seeing that in reverse. I thought each character's um personality was played out like a bit of a caricature um in the lines that they had in this in this first episode. And that was good. It really it gave us a sense of who the show wanted the characters to be and, and what we're watching for going forward. So I, I it was a really clear spelling thing, spelling out of things for the audience, and I, I appreciated that a lot. Um, the, the line, well, I, Sirach's got to be the, the one that he's thinking of is when they get in the lift and, and, and Picard's like, I like, I think it's important for my key officers to know each other's abilities. And she's like, we do, sir. We do. I was like, wow, racy. Um, 
And then Nance is giving, giving the directions to the holodeck for and then checking out Riker's ass. Oh, that is edgy there. Okay. Um, choose a uh, livery collar is what it's called. Um, I'm reminding me of the, the collar of S's that's worn by the Lord Mayor of London. Um, that was kind of cool to see that. Um, and then the last thing, Q's makeup. Wow. Total glam rock. I mean, I obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Total glam rock. I mean, the, the mascara, the eyeliner, the full foundation, you even had a highlighter. And I was like, wow, that is good. Um, I haven't seen makeup like that in a long time. There's a there's a, a person who has been doing shows recently in LA with Mike Garson, who is a Bowie's pianist. Um, the the person is is their their name is uh, Mason Alexander Park. And their makeup is always perfect. And so I've seen that a lot lately. And when I saw cues, I was like, wow, right on. So yay for that. Um, excited to see more and excited to look at it critically uh, as we've learned to do with the last uh, season. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's, it. that's all I've got. Good stuff. Now, speaking of glam rock, the lead singer of the glam rock band, I can't think of anything, Amory Seagull is here. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't come up with a name. Thank you for not. Thank you for not. Thank I know you. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I just loved it, and I think what more can you ask from a show than for it to be progressive in its own time, which it was. And the three female characters just influenced me to no end. And in my house, uh, we're still grieving Tasha Yar's death or spoilers but um this many <laughs> years later and our group family text was like oh my gosh Amory's meeting Denise Crosby today like it's just <laughs> it's such a massive honor um I can't even thank you and Marina and Gates enough for like the huge gift you gave like a little three-year-old girl like you guys were such an inspiration I love you guys I'm so excited for this oh and also and also, the number one emoji on my phone, because I'm so excited, is this one, which I feel like looks like the jellyfish. Oh, yeah. We're going to have that in the Discord, right? Okay. Yes. Okay, wait. Let me... The, the, the two jellyfish. I don't know if we can see it yeah. on your phone, though. Let's see when we're done. It's like no. the party one. Oh, darn it. It's like the two <laughs> party You guys will see it on our, like in our Discord. Fish. We'll put it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just so <laughs> excited, and I can't even wait for every week. It's going to be the best. Absolutely. Yeah. And screw Armas. Okay. <laughs> 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 Armas. Yeah, spoilers. Armas. Nobody knows anything okay. yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Too soon. Uh, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, will fight you to the death defending Armas. He was just misunderstood. How are you, TJ? <laughs> well, that's what I get for being a professional devil's advocate. Okay. Uh, and then I got to go and write a Armas defense. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> like, who is Armas? We we're, we're like in the future. All right, let me come back in time uh, to the encounter at Close Point. And <laughs> And um, you know, I do remember watching the show. Um, I don't know if I watched it like the premiere night, but you know, I remember definitely being you know excited about this show. Um, and even you know watching it again, you know, it, it just kind of brings that sense of uh, of wonder about what's out there um, that I had when I was a kid watching Star Trek. And imagining, you know, all of these ships and going out to all these places and, and you know, flying around at warp speed and having adventures. Um, so that instantly, you know, as soon as the show came come on and, and, you know, you see the the they pan up, you know, to the ship that's flying through space that immediately, you know, rushes back. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, you know, this journey of like really, you know, watching one episode at a time, uh, in the age of, um, what's it called when you watch it all at once? Uh, binging. Binging. Yes. In the age of binging, I'm going to watch one episode a week. And I did that. I got a chance to do that with Deep Space Nine. Uh, and, and I enjoyed that immensely. I didn't skip ahead. I didn't go back. Uh, I watched it one week at a time. 
uh, like I did when I was a kid. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to doing this with uh, TNG. You know, also I had a couple of, uh, you know, things that I picked out from this episode. That O'Brien guy is wearing a red shirt, so he's probably in trouble for the rest of his life. Uh, we don't know how that's going to go because it's 1987. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what was it? Okay, so I actually... Uh, talking, to, we were, I think some people in the chat are talking about like the details that we can see in the remaster. So I'm pretty sure when I watch this on, you know, my grainy, you know, 1987 TV, I couldn't make out the word emergency turbo lift when those doors closed and they went to the battle bridge. Uh, but I did when I, you know, just watched it again, uh, which is awesome. But also, really, that elevator only ever, you know, goes there like it just sits there the rest of the time. It's kind of. Uh, it's a they, one floor elevator. I noticed uh, in one of the, you know, Q's, you know, deals, he's having a cigarette uh, in his hand burning. So I thought that was pretty neat um, and crazy, but also, you know, of the time frame and really. Uh, okay, here's my Q defense. Since since we're defending the the uh, antagonist, uh, all he did was show up, and everything he did was Picard's idea. Picard suggested putting them on trial, and he wow. did that. Hot take uh, from the mm -hmm. from the get go. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that will be a theme in their relationship. Uh, since I'm in 1987, I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know my last deal is a just kind of a slight pick uh when they come up on the on the space net that's behind carrie picard orders an all stop and one of my all-time nitpicks about sci-fi and space shows is there's no such thing as a stop in space stop relative to what yeah so in physics that's that. but again it's 1987 and physics <laughs> is yeah, okay. not a household uh, word. I'll take it. <laughs> take it. <laughs> All right. I'll take it. It's a small nitpick, and it doesn't stop me from enjoying sci-fi. So there we have it. Good stuff. Hi, TJ. Denise. Welcome aboard. Wow. <laughs> now, somebody that does know a ton about physics and visual effects, by the way, Mr. Matt Boardman is also here. What's up, Matt? How you been? You worked on Star Trek. What do you think of this episode? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, it's uh, it always any anytime I watch Encounter at Far Point, it always takes me back. There's a <clears throat> there's a certain innocence to it that I that I love. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, yeah, uh, during the '80s, there were certain themes and, and and whatnot that that we've progressed from. But there's, I don't know, there's 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 almost this joyous innocence to this episode that I love. I mean, right from the opening, you know, we get we we go from the title sequence and we get that great piece by Des McCarthy called Stardate, and the the ship comes down mm -hmm. and we see Picard standing in the window, and then then we get kind of the mini tour. I just, I don't know. I love it. I I'm, I'm gushing a little bit because I just, I, there's just so much about this episode that I, I love. The music is beautiful. We get, you know, it's like you learn behind the scenes things like, you know, the reason why we have engineering is because if they didn't write it into the budget, then they weren't going to have budget for it later. The whole saucer separation, you know, we, they, they did such a good job of, of crafting a story that fit all these elements in so that they would then have them later on in the series. And I just, I just think it's so cool. One of the things I love doing is watching how the sets progress and watching how the uniforms progress throughout the seasons. You can always, so, you know, back <laughs> when it was, yeah, you know, back when it was uh, on, you know, syndication and TV, you'd catch it and you'd be like, okay, I'm looking at the color of the walls. I'm looking at the color of the carpet. Okay, uniforms of this. Okay, this is season five. And then you could, you know, boil it down to there to uh, what episode it was. But no, Next Gen has always been, I've said it before, it's just, it's the warm blanket for me. You know, it's it's that it's that totally. show that is it's so comforting, um, you know, and, and I love the characters. Um, you know, we talked about, the strong women characters. I have been blessed in my life to have strong women around me from my mom to my four sisters. 
um, to have worked with with women who are just strong women. So that's why, like, I love the character of Tasha Yar. I really do. Like, I never, and, and I don't know, maybe I'm weird and maybe I just don't think enough about things, but I like to see her, to see Tasha as, a, as the head of security, never once question it. Like, mm -hmm. and, and Denise, you know, that's a tribute to you. I mean, you owned that role and, and you did a fantastic job with it. So mm -hmm. I never once questioned, um, you know, that, that was her role, you know, that's, she was the best person for the job. And so I loved it. And um, well, so, yeah, so that, yeah, so that's, that's my gosh. Yeah. I, you know, um, uh, you know, and, and then to have, you know, I didn't get to work on next gen until season two of the remastered, but uh to be able to come back and, and do that and work with, you know, Mike and Denise Okuda and Dan Curry, and Doug Drexler, you know, those mm -hmm. guys, you know, what I, I can't, I've said it before. I mean, I, there was a day that I was sitting there and I'm surrounded by, by Dan Curry and Doug Drexler, and Mike and De Denise Okuda. And I'm, and I'm just kind of going, this is, this is what, you know, 12 year old me just dreamt about and to be able to uh, see a side of the show um, you know, Eve talked about the remasters and yeah, I mean, the show was shot so beautifully. Uh, those film transfers, we just didn't get to see them, you know, when they were in standard def, but now that we have them in HD, oh man, what a, what a treat. So yeah, I'm really excited to be able to watch this with all of you and to, uh, yeah, share that warm blanket mm -hmm. with you. Well, let's do it. Yeah. It's going to be a giant quilt. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Well, we've got to run. We're just out of time. Uh, Sirac or Denise, any uh, final thoughts before we go? Uh, I wanted to say John Delancey really liked his performance. Uh, he also did a great job carrying the story. And my line that I liked from him was temper, temper, Capitan. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I love when he says he, he kept pushing that button. I thought it was great. Uh, ch the children of the Zorn. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Oh, I love when Patrick Stewart asked number one when he asked for uh, Riker to participate in a clearly illegal kidnapping. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way I love the way he phrased that. Um, and then, yeah, just in general, really loved the episode. I thought it was uh, a good first episode. It wasn't my all time favorite, but I thought it was good enough to get what? the ball rolling on on, on this show. Um, <laughs> I could have done a little bit without the cave scenes for me. I didn't think they added that much to it. Um, but other other than that, I mean, uh, in general, the, the story introduced the characters tremendously well. And I feel mm -hmm. like they got that. accurate, accurate uh, portrayal of them from what we ended up getting to know them as. So, yeah, really fun. You know, for me, it is such um, a thrill and a delight to... Uh, especially at this holiday time, you know, like a little gift, a little bonbon to go back and, um, you know, see this show that has been, you know, so impactful in my life. And just to uh, kind of go down into my feelings and my heart and my memories of where I was at as a young woman, just getting started in my career, and to be reminded um, of, of so much. Um, I, I had the blessing of watching this last night with uh, my husband and my son, who have never seen it. So we were sitting in our living room as a family, um, in a really natural way, watching this for the first time. You know, obviously I wasn't, well, not obviously, I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure people do this, that I, I wasn't going to make them you know, watch my TV <laughs> shows, you know, and that's a, that's a very awkward, um, you know, leap to, to, to make, and they would discover it on their own. And that's what uh, this has been about for me so you know it's sort of a a, a a double gift for me right now to to have this and share this and 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 once a week you know watch watch an episode um there's so much i don't remember you know there 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 are certain episodes that really stand out um but you know i did so many that absolutely they're they're going to be 
times when I'm just going to go, oh my God, I have absolutely no recollection of shooting this. And <laughs> um, so it it's really, this is a very, very unique and special way to experience this, embrace this, uh, revisit this part of my life. I'm so happy to do it, not alone, like Gloria Swanson in Sunset Boulevard, you know, running my <laughs> movies in the dark. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's coming, but you know, let, <laughs> let's let's do this, let's do this all together. And um, I really look forward to spending some time with you guys, and you know, uh, jarring jarring my heart and my memory with you all. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Love it. Sweet. All right. Uh, this is so much fun. This is so cool. And we can't wait for 172 more episodes of this. Uh, but thank you all very much for joining. What is it? Isn't it? No, 176 or so 175 more only. Uh, thank you to Scott Jensen, Chris McGee, Faith Howell, Carrie Schwent, Melissa Longo, Eve England out in Wales, Tierney C. Diekman, my live in Tokyo. That's misnomer. Uh, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, and Matt Bordenman for myself, for Serotic Lofton, uh, Denise Crosby. Uh, thank you all very much. We will see you next time. Until then, always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>